My name is Jack Strongitham. I'm the application engineer for Autodesk in the UK, Ireland, and Benelux countries. Um, we're going to take a look at how we can uh, do cross sections a little bit better in Civil 3D 2010. Um, we've done an update to the country kit template for the UK, um, which you can make use of for yourself, and it'll give you a head start into creating much better cross sections in a more dynamic way from your designs. So here we have a model with multiple corridors with uh, gaps with uh, junctions or intersections in the middle. You see they're all separate. I have uh, surfaces for each of these corridors. As you see where you have gaps they will span across with the surface. To create the gaps in the corridors I've used an assembly with uh, no sub-assemblies in it. So you see we've got individual surfaces for each road corridor. So what I'm going to do now is create a combined surface for the road design. So just create a standard surface. And within that surface go to the edit and then paste surfaces together. Now here you have to be careful how you paste surfaces together. Do the individual roads first and then place the junctions or intersections second. And you see the composite of these will uh, create the nice clean surface that we need. Okay. So now you see we've got some excess triangles, so we need to just erase them so they're not taken account of in the cross sections. So just save the drawing and for best practice it's better to create cross sections not within the model that you're creating. So we're creating a new new drawing with the new template uh, called update 1 uh, which is available on the blog site. We want to save that and using either data shortcuts or the vault is create a reference to the alignment that you want to create the sections from. And then to bring the rest of the data in, we can simply extract the background drawing, so the actual model that we just uh, finished completing. So we'll create some sample lines now along the uh, main alignment. And you can see we're actually getting the corridor and all the surfaces through the XREF. So we just turn off the ones we don't need. We want, in this case, the existing ground, the final road surface, and we can also bring in maybe some of the corridors that are based on that alignment. Within Civil 3D 2010 and previous releases, we're only able to create cross sections from the corridor along um, the baseline that it's created. So to create the more advanced um, cross sections we need to have a surface. So creating the sample lines uh, 20 meter interval and also typically the cross sections are not always the same scale as your plan drawings and this is why using this data shortcut or vault technique is quite advantageous to get that extra uh, option of scale. So here we're using the um, the change within the template to use a plot to sheet viewport. So in the template we've actually got um, a drawing border and viewport in the layout tab ready to use. Just turning off the lines to the ground so we've got these ordinate lines or candles as some people use and then here's the new band set that's been implemented so we're actually only using one band here as you can see we've got empty bands and we need to set the design surface for surface 1 and the ground for surface 2 
and you see we've got these cross sections paged and because I just uh, place the samples at the defaults every th uh, 30 meters either side of the center line as you see we've got a lot of drawing sheets and not many cross sections on them we don't really need maybe as uh, big a distance as 30 meters either side you can see the uh, all the labels are now in the boxes and we've got stagger implemented as well I'm just going to go back now and change the uh, width from the center line um, to reduce it from 30 to 15 meters click OK and you can see that the cross sections literally shrink in again we've got a little bit of wastage here um, you know this is all options for yourself to implement but what we can do is go on to the object style of the section and on the graph we've actually got a pad in either side of the section so you see it's one meter at the moment and even top and bottom let's shrink it down to one meter or a half uh, and we'll see that the overall sections come together by just resetting the sheet to viewport it will regroup all the sections and pages together so we now got four sheets and uh, four sections per sheet we can probably get some more on this uh, sheet of paper as well by reducing the column and height spacing so we're going to this plot sheet viewport on the array and we can change this to five millimeters each and that'll just basically bring the sections together even more you see we reset and we're actually getting nine cross sections per drawing now you see where we're going over junctions you may get quite a lot of uh, labels appearing because we're actually annotating all the grade breaks within the surface however these new labels as you see you can uh, individually choose by holding the control key down with left pick uh, either deleting the label or in this case we can even move them away from each other a little bit further than maybe where the software leaves it maybe over the junction area you don't want as many uh, grade breaks labeled maybe in this case we'll take an individual case and using the weeding on that band uh, we can actually say ignore everything that's uh, closer than half a meter obviously try these options out for yourself to get the best result so now we want to see this in the viewport and in the paper space so we'll just turn on the layout tabs and change so here's the drawing border that's in the template obviously for yourself to replace with your own company version when you go zoom extents you can see that the graphics uh, go crazy because of the, the scale so we zoom in we choose the scale which is back to 1 to 200 and then just zoom to fit